Hello everybody, welcome to the videos, my name is Jamie from Wonders Games, today we're doing a game capture video. Video, whether it's an unboxing video, a tryout video, or a game capture video, maybe a combination of all three. Now, when I started my channel in late 2017, I bought myself the Elgato HD60, which cost me £100, and it's brilliant. Now, of course, there are a lot of newer versions out there. Now, to get this brand new, I don't know if you can, unless you're getting it on eBay. But anyway, it's brilliant. Now, I have had a few issues over the years, but most of them I've been able to put right, apart from the latest one, which is due to dropped frames. Which is why I'm deciding to give another one a whirl. I bought this one on Amazon, which was a 4K Ultra HD, which I believe was 40, 45 pounds, something like that, for you post some back in. So anyway, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna try out some game systems, different games, and compare the two and see how they perform. Now I also bought this about three years ago. This is a game capture which I've never actually used, never been out of its box. This is a Roxio Game Capture HD Pro. Now I bought this not to capture games. It was going to be originally for my webcam. Now if you're capturing a camcorder as well as capturing game footage, you need two game captures. So I originally bought it to use to capture my camcorder. But as it turned out, I didn't actually do it like that. I used a normal Logitech. So I might try that as well. But anyway, we're going to try out the new 4K Ultra HD, which I know a few people also do use it. Okay, so inside the box we have a very small user manual, like that. Uh, your HDMI game capture card fighting for the dream. Now, you're going to get so many cables, and if you're like me, you've bought so many things over the years. Most of them do give you a cable, which of course you end up with so many. So these are probably going to go in a box in the corner of the room over there. I'll use the ones I was using before. But anyway, the size isn't much different from the Elgato HD60, but I love the style of it. But anyway, a 4K Ultra HD USB 3.0 HDMI video capture made in China. So you connect the HDMI input there and the HDMI output there, and on the other side you can plug in a headphone, a microphone, and a USB 3.0. So anyway, we're going to give it a whirl. Okay, now I'm actually recording this on two different cameras, it's going to be quite difficult for me. And I'm going to start things off with trying a few games out on the Amiga 1200 as it's already set up here. So, a few games at random, and I'm going to try them out on both the Elgato and the Ultra HD, and then hopefully we can compare the two. Then I'm going to go onto a different system, and again, a few games at random, and try it out as well, and maybe try out a few other systems as well. But anyway, for the meantime, we'll focus on the Amiga. After the minute, I've not played a game for ages, so it's a bit all over the place. So that's got to be adjusted, straight away. It's on there. Well, that's two mistakes. Right, okay. Now, if you're capturing on Amiga, not only do you need a game capture, you also need a video converter. I bought this about four years ago, it's brilliant. And quite recently, I bought myself another one as a tryout to see if that was causing any dropped frames. And it wasn't, it was exactly the same. So the issue is down to the game capture itself. Now, due to another video I uploaded quite recently on my channel, it's based on quality. And a lot of people said that the standard quality was best. So for this test, we're going to be using standard settings. So anyway, we're now using the Elgato HD60. We're going to fire up a game now, try it out, and then move over to the other one. Okay, for the first test, James Pond 2, codename Robocod. And this one has a Robocod protection. So we go to our little book here, and we have page 9, line 1, word 1, which is bump. There you go.
There we go, product X, give this a try. Now normally when I'm having dropped frames, it seems to be more noticeable on a continuously scrolling screen like a shooter map. So, let's give this a try. Again, we'll try it on both of the game captures and see which is best. Fly around rock surface. Okay, that was surprisingly difficult to try and get the spaceship in the same place for both different footages at the same time. As a result of that, I'm now left with poo weapons. I mean, really, really poo weapons. You can't do anything with this. It's game over. Okay, next on the list, Lorestial Presents. This is a brilliant game. A game designed by a digital concept. This is Gym Power. Right, again, we'll do one more game and then we'll move on to a different system. But of course, this game has a lot of parallax. So we're going to test out the new game capture and see how it copes. And again, we'll compare the two. But Jamie, again, try and get the pushes pretty much identical each time. Yeah, I'll try. Okay, this is Gym Power. Look how much parallax there is. So how is it performing? This is on the Elgato HD60. So again, I'm going to try and do the same thing each time. Putting my character in the same place each time. Doing the same thing. And we'll compare the two.com and see which one is stuttery, if any of them are stuttery. Are both of them moving smoothly? Is one of them moving smoothly? And if so, which one? But again, staying still for a long period of time, I can survive, but not very long. But a little bit more longer this time. But again, it's a magnificent game, and it sounds absolutely sublime. And uh, one more time, I'm hanging in there. Hopefully it's going to be enough footage to get a test, a decent test. Anyway, so much power out. I mean, there's so many layers there. It's unbelievable. I have to admit, this Elgato is performing really, really well today. Normally, when I'm trying to capture it, there's always a little bit of a delay. Not today, it's captured immediately. Right, anyway, we'll move over to the 4K.
Okay, we're gonna move things over to the C64 now. Now, again, like that other video I did, we're also gonna test out Soul Force. But this time, I'm not gonna be using the C64 Maxi. We're gonna use the cartridge. I'm gonna see how it performs on original hardware. You know what? That fired up perfectly, first time. Absolutely fantastic. Right, so we are now on the Elgato HD60 again, but we're moving things over to now a C64. But we're using an old school C64 this time. So, Soul Force cartridge, where is it? Right, have we got sound? I don't know, I've got my headphones on my head. Okay, unfortunately I had a few delays. Uh, my power pad doesn't work, so I'm going to go and find my other one. Then I managed to get it to capture, but I had no sounds. So, I plugged in my tape deck and tried a few tapes out to see if I can get any sound on other games. The tape deck wasn't working. So, eventually, it's rocking and rolling, we're now good to go. So this is Soul Force on cartridge. And also, it allows me to play this amazing game for the first time using the best ever joystick. This is the Zipstick. Right, Soul Force by Sarah Jane Avery, Prodivision 2020. Okay, original hardware this time. Keep it real. Let's go. Okay, this is Soul Force running on the original C64, running from a cartridge. We will capture an Elgato HD60, running at standard quality. Any good? Hope so. It's definitely not a how-to video. Again, it's feedback I'm after. So yeah, I want to know which system performed better on which game capture. Any drop frames? Is it better? Is the lag better? Does it look better? Sound better? Yeah, a lot of questions there, but that's what I'm after. But it's great to play this game on a zip stick, even though I'm not actually moving around very much. I'm trying to keep the spaceship pretty much stable for each attempt. So you get the perfect comparison, but we do need some platforms. Now normally when you're capturing a scrolling shoot 'em up on an Elgato, you do get this bobbly platform. More so in other games, but it's a mystery. I don't know how you solve it. But yeah, it's pretty much been there since the start of the channel, but again, some systems do it more. I should say some games do it more, but yeah, it's a mystery if it's actually solvable. But again, that's what I'm here to try out, that's what we're here to solve. And also, some games, if you have a shield, and at the moment I do, sometimes you see it and sometimes you don't. Sometimes you see the spaceship and sometimes you don't. Another time, you can see both, but again, it's it's flicking between the two. But again, it's, it's fairly normal for Nogata, I'd say, but yeah, I don't know if you can actually solve that. But on previous tests, you either don't see the spaceship, or you don't see the shield. You don't have both of them at the same time. You have one or the other. But I suppose that is a slight improvement. But anyway, we'll move over to the 4K in a moment, and we'll do the same again. But again, try and keep your spaceship locations pretty much identical. It's just difficult when you've got a boss battle on the rise. Again, it looks so good, it plays so well. Superb by Sarah Jane Avery. Anyway, shoot the core. Score 70,800. Still got the shield though. But again, I'm trying to keep the spaceship fairly stable. But Jamie, it's going to take forever doing it like that. Go for the kill. What's that? The result of the boom pow. There we go, good pow. Right, we're gonna move over to the 4K. Okay.
Okay, this is for a separate test. This is to see if my tape deck is working. Hopefully it does. Right. Bye. It might just need a clean more than anything. But yeah, when I tried it just now, it didn't work. But anyway, I'm looking for a loading screen. There we go. Superb. It works. Fantastic. Might just need a clean. Yeah. But it is a very old system, it really is. But yeah, I don't think it's actually had a proper clean in its life. But we've actually got three of these tape decks. One of them's still in its box. There we go, rum. We'll run with that. Right, we're going to another system. Try out some more games. You know the drill. However, that doesn't sound good. Maybe it does need a clean after all. Okay, I've got to work in 40 minutes time. But anyway, I fired up the C64. And we're going to play a few games, but this time run it as a demo, with the top one being Elgato and the bottom one being the 4K, again for a comparison situation. There we go. Brilliant game. Superb. Bruce Lee on the C64. There we go! Car Patrol! Copyright 1984 by Activision. I have long played this before on my channel. But yeah, 25 Klansmen, be impressed with this one. But anyway, again, this one has a rolling demo. So we'll try it out with both game captures. Okay, this is part patrol, so I guess we want to pop a go. This is why I'm on the 4K. Now in this game, basically, we are a park ranger. What we're gonna try and do at each level is find all the litter. And it could be anywhere. Sometimes it's in the water and sometimes it's not. But basically these levels go around in a loop. Now you do get a few disadvantages here, because you do have energy, but it's draining all the time down the bottom left corner of the screen. But you do get some luck on your side because you do get a supply energy, which at the moment of time is 8,000 calories. Now at the start of every level, you have a hut. In that hut is where all your supply is. Now if your energy is getting a little bit low, you can replenish it with some of your supply by going into the hut. And that would deduct 1,000 from the supply. But anyway, if you run out of energy, you die. But anyway, you've got to try and find three more cans. Now you press fire to jump. Avoid the tortoises. Okay, this game does have also quite a few submissions. Some you have to do, some you don't have to. But there we go. Find it all, and then all remaining energy was wasn't much, it's converted into points. We start the game off with three lives. Okay, we do one more level. First things first, we go into the hut and get some more energy. Every time we go in there, 1,000 will be deducted from the supply, but 9,000 is actually going to be half. Now these tortoises will kill you. But if they fall into the water, you can rescue them, you don't have to. But if you don't, they get angry, they get meaner. And the difficulty to avoid is the home minion on you very quickly. However, a swimmer is a completely different story. They have to be rescued. However, this is the twist though. If you get too close, they'll kill you. The swimmer will actually kill your character. But, when the swimmer is in danger, you have to rescue him, otherwise he'll die, and so will your character. But you do earn additional supply, energy, for every swimmer you rescue. So that's a good thing. Now, the more you progress in this game, more enemies will arrive on the scene, including snakes. Now, you can stun a snake by using snake repellent, but it costs a price. Every time you use it, it is actually deducted from your energy. About 150, something like that. 
But again, use it wisely. But when they are stunned, I believe it stuns all of them on the screen for a limited amount of time. But yes, you've got to do what you've got to do to get the job done. But if you're low on energy, you're probably not going to be able to use it. Right, we're trying to rescue these tortoises. Right, we've got one more bottle to find. Also, late in this game, you also get ants. And I actually steal the supply energy. There you go, no ants here. But there we go, we ended up with lots of energy that time. And we have lots and lots of score. But there you go, let's park patrol. There you go, next up. Bit of phobia, why not? Can you destroy your fears or will the fears destroy you? Superb game came out in 1989. Okay, this is Phobia on the CD4. It's a good game. Now, this one has a lot of parallax, but for this time, I've gone straight to the 4K. No Elgato here. However, I'm noticing quite a lot of faults with this 4K, which I'll get to in a moment. But yeah, I don't know how it works performing here. That's a brilliant game. I love it. I've got an Amiga as well, but each level is based around a different phobia. This is level one, which is, of course, a Raptophobia, which, of course, is spiders. All enemies are then based around spiders. And so many items you've got to collect. Now, you can get weapons in this game, but not as often as other shoot em ups. Once you get them, you keep them when you die. So it's not that mean to you. But you've got to try and collect a certain quantity of items. Once you've collected a certain quantity, then you can actually go on to the final section of the level, which summons the boss. If you haven't collected enough, you go back to the start. But each level is based on a different phobia. Anything from spiders, snakes, birds, fear of water, even fear of death. When you get to the boss, one attempt. If you run out of time, back to the start. If you die, back to the start. So yeah. But most of the boss battles do stick to the same sort of pattern, the same movements. Apart from their firepower, that's different. But anyway, the icons, some of them you have to shoot and some of them you have to collect. But the ones you collect are more towards your weapons, even though weapons are very few in this game. But anyway, we're going to arrive at a barrier in a moment. If I haven't shot enough or collected enough, we won't going to go through. But I have, so it's fine. We'll go through. We're on the boss. So this is timed. Take too long, that's the start. Shoot his face. It gets faster. I think that's like a warning if you're taking too long. Then you go through a tunnel section and that then leads to the section we blow up the planet. So there we go, boom, pow. Okay, so once you defeat the boss, then you go through a tunnel section. Each planet has its tunnel section. And at the end of each tunnel section, there is a core or a shield. Blow that up and destroy the planet. So each time you destroy a planet, one of those squares at the bottom will fill up. And I'm assuming, fill all of them up and you complete the game. But the game is actually very, very long because each planet has a tunnel section that leaves it. And then once you defeated the planet, then you've got to go through space to get to the next one. But after the first planet, you then do get a choice of where you want to go. But anyway. Each planet also does have a moon, which you don't have to do. You do if you so wish, but it helps for additional lives and weapons. I believe that's the only way you can get additional weapons in this game. They are basically orbs. I believe it's a maximum of two. But once you get them, bear in mind it takes a lot of effort to get them. Once you've got them, you keep them. So when you die, you don't lose them. Unless you run out of life, of course. But anyway, these tunnel sections, well, some of them anyway, don't have quite as many enemies. But they're all difficult in their own ways. Anyway, we're hanging in there. Hanging in there for dear life. Anyway, not too far away from the boss, or would you say, an egg shaped boss. Shoot it to reveal an icon, which is a question mark. Pick up the question mark, blow up the shield, destroy the planet. And pow, have some of that. There you go. One planet destroyed. It's getting there. It's slow, but it's getting there. It will get there, I promise you. Still there. There you go. Come on. One more. You can't continue until it's 100% destroyed. There we go. Boop, pow. Phobia. <laughs> there we go. Sonic. Why not? We need something a little bit more fast paced. Let's give it a whirl. Plus a different system. Copyright Sega 1991.
Green Hill Zone Act 1. Superb. This is Sonic the Hedgehog on the Mega Drive. We're going to do another test. A light test. Now this is on the Ugalto HD60. So what we're going to do now is press the fire button, let you know when I'm pressing it, and we'll see how much delay there is. Sonic is ready. Are you ready? Pressing fire. Now. 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 And finally, now. So yeah, quite a big delay. However, I knew that was the case. It's been like that since day one of buying this Elgato HD60. But anyway, we'll do the same test on the 4K. However, I have noticed quite a few things wrong with this 4K. So soon, I'll give you my final thoughts. Green Hill Zone at 1 on the Mega Drive. This is Sonic the Hedgehog. Are we ready? Same test again, but now running on the 4K. Pressing the fire button, are you ready? Sonic, he's ready. Pressing the button, now. Now. And finally, now. What a difference, a huge difference. A lot better. So, got one more test to try out, but we're gonna go on to the next game, which is Sonic the Hedgehog 2. There we go, superb, I have this one as well, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, copyright 992 by Sega. There we go, this is Sonic the Hedgehog 2 on the Mega Drive. So what we do for this test, this is on the 4K, basically what I'm going to do is, nothing. Absolutely nothing. The problem is, over the course of time, I've noticed that the audio eventually moves out of sync on its own, literally on its own. But I'm not noticing it when I'm recording it. So of course I'm doing tests at the start, it's right, carrying on, when it gets to the editing stages, I'm noticing it's out of sync. So basically, because this has a time that is going up, I'm gonna let it roll. But I'm gonna copy and paste this exact scene on this piece of footage and place it on top. And then over the course of time, we're going to see how long it takes until the audio slowly starts to move away. And the worst I've heard it so far was about six or seven seconds out. So I'm going to make myself a cup of tea. We're going to watch that time and we'll see what happens. Okay, let's give it a try. Let's make some sound effects, pick up some rings, kill some bad guys, and pick up some power-ups and see how audio is in or out of sync. Yeah, it's very bizarre. I don't understand it. But yeah, early on today, it was really, really bad. Probably won't be quite as bad, because I haven't been playing it for as long as time as I did early on today. But anyway, we'll give it a good test and go at fast speeds. But yeah, it's a brilliant game. I love it. But yeah, this audio syncing thing is a very, very strange, bizarre thing. But yeah, I don't know where I'm going to go with this game capture. I've got a few ideas for the future, but I don't think this is going to be the future for me. But we've got to try these things out. We've got to see what's wrong with it, what's good about it. But yeah. Flying through the air. Poor Tails can't keep up. No surprise, he's always lacking behind. But anyway, superb. In 45 seconds, ending it with 72 rings. Time bonus and ring bonus and a total score. Was it in sync? I'll find out soon enough. Where's the life out of it, though?
There you go, for the final test, we're going to move over to the Xbox One and see how it copes with modern gaming. That's me, that is. Okay, there we go. Superb game on the Xbox. This is Cinemore EX. Copyright 2017 THQ Nordic AB, Sweden original version, developed by Digital Reality in cooperation with Grasshopper Manufacturing Incorporated. Brilliant game. Okay, this is Cinemore EX, an amazing game on the Xbox One, and this is running on the Elgato HD60. This is high definition. I've increased the quality to the best it can do. Now, normally the Elgato will pass the flying colours, but this game is a bullet hell. This gives Uga Ruga run for its money. But this game does have a story mode, but also you have boss panic, which is what this is, and I love it. I think it's a really, really nice touch because it gives you a little bit of practice with a different story all over heads. And you do them in any order you like. We'll do one boss battle with the Elgato and one with the 4K and see how they perform. I don't think my mind is pretty much made up at this point. But anyway, it's broken down into sections. You can defeat all of its guns in each section. And depending on how quickly you do it, will determine how much time is given to you. Not many shoot em ups I know where you have time and energy. This has both. But each of its guns has an energy bar of its own. Now you do get sub weapons. All your weapons and energy is located in the top right corner of the screen. Now if you take damage, you lose energy, you lose time, and you lose weapons. However, weapons you get back if you quit. If you're not quit, it'll just float away. But this is a brilliant game. It is superb. Amazingly though, I've never actually finished it. The story is really, really long. And really, really challenging towards the end. Right, sub weapon. Use. That's some of that. Boom. Right, maximum time is 99 seconds. They can also slow the enemy bullets down, but it's limited. You do that by pressing R2 on the controller. Yeah, try and deal with one gun at a time. Don't want all of them firing at once. Yeah, amazing game. So far, so good. I think this is the final section. This is what we're gonna use screen freeze. We say the bullet freeze. Oh. Does wear off. It always does. There we go. Boom. Ow! Time mass stabilized. Boom. Right, score, hit ratio, penalties continues, time spent on C, time spent on B, time spent on rank A, total grade. Should be good. Got 100 percent hit ratio, no penalties, no continues. Should be good. I got a an S++. Superb. There we go. We're going to move over to 4K now. Okay, another boss. Different game capture. This on the 4K. Hopefully it's going to cope. Is the order going to survive? Is it going to stay in sequence? I have no idea. But what I do know is it's going to be a difficult boss. It always is. But it looks outstanding. It really, really does. But it's another bullet hell, this one. But this one moves around a lot more. This going to go through many... Sequences is one, but it does have two different sections. And again, slow that time down, do whatever you can to make it easier for yourself. Right, a few hits there, but we are fine. However, my sub weapon has now run out. He's mad. Shoot those guns. Right, it will fly away, it'll come back later on today. Boom. To be continued, time mass stabilised. Right, just in, just in case. Just in case. Right, deactivate. Activate. Okay, put it back in the sink. Okay, he returns for the second time. And what I've had to do is, just to be sure, I've deactivated the 4K. Then reactivate it again. If it was out of sync, I don't know. It shouldn't be now. If it is, it is. There's not really a lot I can do about it. But anyway, we've got another boss battle to contend with. It's a lot of lasers and a lot of tentacles. Each tentacle has an energy bar. And slow it down, but it's limited. And also, it's windy now. It affects your flying. Right, one more gun remains. So what do you need to do to make it easy for yourself? Don't 
doesn't take too much damage while doing it. There we go, good pal. Superb. Time mass stabilised. What a game. Okay, score, hit ratio, penalties. I think I took a few hits towards the end. How many did I take? Two, that's alright. No continues used. Time spent on C. Time spent on B. And A. What did we get? What did we get? S. S for superb. And the game is. Right. Brilliant. Did it con... <laughs> right, okay. Okay, one more game and we're putting in to this video. Now we're going on to the Xbox 360. How did this happen? I bet you guys thought it wasn't going to make its way into this video. Of course, there's always time for an R9. But this is R-Type Dimensions. Blast off and strike the evil butter empire. This is on the Xbox 360. Okay, last game, last system. It's R-Type Dimensions on the Xbox 360. And guess what? I love it. It's superb. Basically, it's a remake. But now it's got a bit of a 3D look. And of course, the graphics have been enhanced. But it's still a magnificent game. Now, if you press R1 on the controller, you can switch between modern and retro. Good old retro. But for this part of the video, we'll go with modern here. So, again, the weapons are the same. The enemies are the same. They've just been a little bit more enhanced. We still have the force, which, of course, is indestructible. It won't protect you from everything. Lasers will go through it like a knife through butter. And, of course, the force will go on the front or the rear of the R9. And, of course, you can block most enemies with it and most bullets with it. The beam is located at the top of the screen rather than the bottom. But again, it's brilliant. So R-Type 1 and R-Type 2 feature here. And both of them can do the same thing in terms of retro and modern graphics. But anyway, I have completed it a few times. Let's do it again. But anyway, it's actually cool past midnight. Always time for an R9. But anyway, charge that beam. You're going to hit that error. You hit it successfully, it kills all of them. Superb. And the music is brilliant as well, of course. I'm easy to please. But anyway, I hope this 4K is hanging in there. We're not going to go on the Elgato for this one. Straight to the 4K. If it copes, it copes. It doesn't, it doesn't. But my mind is pretty much made up anyway. But it is good. It is good. But it's not as good as I was expecting. But yes, it's good value for money. But if you're looking to start up a YouTube channel, it's a good place to start. It might be better for you. But then I have had quite a lot of bad luck with this video. It's been a difficult video, but I have enjoyed it. But hopefully you'll enjoy it as well. Yeah, it's nice to sort of spice it up a little bit with some different things. Different systems. Different ideas. But anyway, bring on the boss. 3D style. And again, I'm going to attack it the same way I normally do. It's only the CC4 version, I do it differently. But I'm going to detach the force, which I've got to try and remember which button it is. I think it's X. There we go. Hit it with a force. Takes so a little bit more hits on this version, but again, it looks superb. Plays well. Good pow. R-Type Dimensions. Amazing game. I will stream it one day in the future, but it won't be on the 4K. But anyway, that's the end of my video. So, final thoughts, Jamie. Final thoughts. It's okay. It's okay. No. Maybe. Yes. So anyway, the game capture is okay. It's okay. However, I probably won't use it anymore in the future. But I won't get rid of it. I'll keep it. It's nice to have a backup plan in case something goes peaked on with my Elgato. But in the future, I'm going to purchase this again. Another Elgato. Probably HD60S. Which amazingly, late in 2020, I did buy one. But unfortunately, I had quite a lot of problems, and it all happened at once. Uh, first of all, money was low, my laptop wasn't working, my PC wasn't working, and even though I bought it, I shouldn't have done. I sent it back, got my money back, and I wait for the time in the future when money is there. In the meantime, I did buy myself this from Amazon. This is the OSSC, which stands for an open source scan converter, and this is hopefully going to eliminate all lag, which has always been there, 
with the Elgato HD60. And also be nice to see what else it can do, because I don't know what else it can do, but I'm sure it's going to make the quality a lot better. But that would be a separate video altogether. But anyway, if you're looking to do a channel and you don't have a lot of money, then yes, this game capture is a good place to start. I just hope you have a lot more luck than I did. But anyway, yeah. But anyway, I'll leave you with a few outtakes, but in the meantime, this is Jamie Mullins Games. Please like me, comment, share, please subscribe to my channel, face to fan page, and Twitch. Just type in Mullins Games, you find it fairly easily. Please remember to click the bell icon and notify you if it's no fantastic. Not these sort of videos, do retro drum plays without cheats, happy making and live streams on Friday night, you can time about the clock, so I won't wait. See you next time, did easy. Ciao, bye, see ya. Right, now is there sound? I've got a funny feeling there's not going to be any sound here. I'm guessing not. Maybe I need to restart. Right, that took me an hour and a half to get to capture. The problem was, is the port that I was normally using for the Elgato. I couldn't... Now normally trying to capture this particular system does cause quite a few issues. However, you never know, we might get lucky. Sometimes it'll fire up first time. But then I am changing all these cables around a lot today. Okay, we are now on the C64. Dun dun dun! Right, what am I gonna play though? Something that is quite not a lot of this video, I have to admit, however, I've got to make an alteration to the port. You've got to do that on the file. That'd be for something completely different. But anyway. There you go, Pop! Oh, too late. I wasn't ready. Oh. There you go, Pop! Oh, I've done it again! Another problem which is difficult is trying to get both screens looking exactly the same size as the one I just did. Right. <laughs> Ah, whoa, my goodness me, ah, crazy around here, stay in the middle of the screen, it's safer. Oh. Wow, go man, loop loops, and go through narrow tunnels, we have 56 coins, rings Jamie, they're rings, 69 rings, not doing this again are we? There we go, 79, killing machine you are. Just missed the great big massive ring at the end. But there we go, Sonic has passed, act one, score, time bonus, and ring bonus. There we go.